Amen. Are you ready for the presence of God? Your life will change forever. I say your life will change forever. Rebecca, that name was a prophetic sign I had for this year. I kept hearing the word Rebecca. And today she has shared a testimony. And placed and made a reference to a prophetic word she had. And I know that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it, 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 it looks like today is someone's appointment with destiny. Somebody's word will come. Somebody's word will come. Can we stand? Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. We hallow your presence, Lord.
master is here this morning can you see him moving amongst the seven candlesticks the risen lord is here this morning he wants to make his presence known to you like never before he wants to take you on a, an exciting and expedition and journey in the spirit his presence is here now some of you are feeling some trembling sensation on your hands some of you is warm those are tokens there goes there goes
You can't talk about the presence of God without worship. No, no, you can't talk about it. So this is part of the sermon. You are learning how to practice His presence, to host His presence. Tambourines, don't shake now. Just reverence that presence. Psalm 16, Psalm 16, verse 11. You're going to learn something that will change your life. You may have heard it time and again in this church, but I pray that the Holy Spirit helps us to hear it in a new way. Very early this morning, I had to quickly minister for my friend, Pastor Shola Oshima Kinde, whose church got burnt. You know that story? God restored it. The church is rebuilt. So he wanted us to just come and just bless it and blow the horn. And, and he didn't even know what I was going to preach. And then he just says, I want to introduce my friend. That this is a man who carries the presence of God. And even without ministering, you can just sense. And I just laughed. Because that's the consciousness that's been in my heart in the last few days to open our eyes to the reality of the presence, the value. Your most prized possession is the presence of God. It's the presence of God. Thank God for cars, for 
marriage, for all these things. If you lose everything else, you've lost nothing. If you lose his presence, you've lost everything. Let's read together. I want to know why I can we just, just gently and hold your microphones while you are there. We're going to sing. Let's, let's read together. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a, a, a preamble or a background. I was on the phone with my friend and brother. I won't tell you who he is. We're talking about a couple of things. Some situation, you know, they are handling. And then, as it is with most of my friends, if you stay long with me on the phone, and in 15, 30 minutes, one hour, we have not begun to discuss a revelation on the word of God, you are not my friend. No, no, no. If, I'm, if I stay long with someone, if we're discussing politics, football, it will end up with the Bible. That's how I know my tribe. About three days ago, I was outside. I'm sure that my wife would have been expecting me to come up. She knows when I'm on those calls. She knows a couple of my friends. <laughs> and when I'm just there, she just gives me the space. You see, if you love God, you can't hide it. Yeah, you're saying uh, yeah. your own Christianity, you don't have to disturb other people. If, you, if people can't see it, you don't love God. And then we began to break into this revelation of God. And I was outside my house and I began to pray in tongues. I just got so overwhelmed and just I knew I had tapped into something. And then we spent over three hours on the phone. Just scriptures, scriptures. Pull up one. We're shouting. He's pulling up one. Hey, we're praying in tongues. We're, I mean, I'm pacing around my house. I'm sure my neighbors, this man is crazy. By the way, that's how I wrote, Alone was by you, you are mighty. I was outside my garden, pacing, pacing like this, pacing. And the words kept coming. Then I went to sleep and I just felt, okay, let me worship this Jesus and practice what I found and then I had one of the most amazing deliverances in a dream and I knew that this thing works, say it works now hope you know that we've been on the principle of the doctrines of Christ so we're supposed to do the second half of faith but I knew that this revelation was too good to keep to myself and it felt like something the oasis should be walking in or should walk in in this season and we're going to come back to the doctrines. But this is revolutionary. I mean, I'm not going to say anything new that someone has not said, but may the Holy Spirit imprint it in your heart differently. Another text is Hebrews 5, 7. What is it about this presence of God? What is it? New King James. You're going to write a bit. You're going to sing. You're going to cry. You're going to worship. That's why I thought we should clear out everything. I don't know how this is going to go. Some of us may go home crying. You may lay down here after service. But whichever way God takes us, just make sure you don't miss out. Let's read together. I want to go. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication? with vehement cries and tears to save to, to him who was able to save him from death and was because of his godly fear so you see that Jesus still prayed he's the same one who said if you kill this if you destroy this temple I'll raise it on the third day so he knew but he still had to pray about it that's a point for somebody amen he prayed to the one who was able to raise him from the dead, save him from the dead. We will come back to that scripture. That's the scripture that broke us, that set us on fire. 
that reminded me of the things I used to do intensely. I was a presence junkie. I'm still am. But it was so intense. I thank God that my sister is here. I used to live in a place called number 34, Aturashi. I was a presence junkie so much. My sister, Victoria in the UK, had a meeting with my elder sister and said, this, this guy is losing it. This, and my sister, who was a president of a fellowship, who opened the way for us to, to know the Lord, she was like, when they said your own is too much, my sister's own was too much. Now, when that person says your own is too much, <laughs> calls you to say, so, you know what, Nat, you have to calm down. You have to calm down. I'm hearing stuff that I don't like. Because I would just wake up, I'll get into my Kia car, I'll cry, I'll call my sister, I'll be led to do something, I'll empty my money, say, go and pay this money to this person's account. And then my sister now called my elder sister. He said, he's even giving out all his money. <laughs> because I had found something that meant more. That's, that's, that's the thing I'm introducing you today. Everyone in this kingdom from Bible days who did great stuff knew the secret of what we're about to share. What is the presence of God? What is the presence of God? The presence of God is the essence of someone. Say the essence. The essence of a person. It's the essence of a person. The presence of God is the essence of God in this context. So when you say somebody is present in a place, you are saying that, you know, his person, his being, he's made available at that location, at that place. One of the things that word means in the Hebrew is face. Say face. If you have a strong concordance, you see that word face. From our text, let me just give you the Hebrew name so that you can pose with it. It is the word Panim. P-A-N-I-Y-M. It means face. We see it again in Numbers 624. Numbers 624. Let's go there. Even though it does not appear as presence, but there's something we can learn from it. We see it as the word face. Numbers, it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Continue. The Lord make what? His face, his panim, to shine upon you. That word there, panim, is the same word as presence. And be gracious unto you. you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Continue. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. We will get here later. So this was a, 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 a blessing. God commanded the, the priest to speak over those people that as they spoke this blessing, it was as though literally God was placing his name on God's people. Let me even do it right now. The Lord bless and keep you. Yes. The Lord make his panim, his face to shine upon you. Yes. The Lord be gracious unto you. Yes. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Yes. And give you his shalom. Yes. So we see the word face and the word presence used interchangeably. And that's true. I mean that makes sense because... A, a person's face is indicative of the person, right? That's why you don't have your leg on your international passport. 
Do you understand? I mean, there are other parts of your bodies that are, you know, distinct. You know, your, your fingerprint is also distinct. You could have had your fingerprint there, which you also do. But where on the, on the spot that identifies you, in fact, I was traveling from the U.S. a few weeks back. And now they don't even need to check your passport. Hope you know that. Some of you have tried. You don't need. You walk through and then there is a camera. They tell you just open your eyes. You look at it and it captures you and confirms, authenticates your identity by your face. So a person's face is representative of what? His, of the person, which is his presence. Amen. Hence, you find the expression, seek your what? Face. Or, or God saying, seek my face. In other words, desire or seek my presence. Psalm 24 verse 6, this is the generation that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Amen. And that's why when Moses was up on the mountain, I think in, uh, you know, um, Exodus 34 or so, I hope I'm right, the Bible says that his what? Face. Did what? Shone. We're going somewhere. Amen. Another token of God's presence or, or someone's presence is his voice. Say his voice. Say his voice. Do you know that there are some phones that use what? Voice signature, right? Yes. If I'm going back home and I'm singing home, my children know that daddy is back. Have they seen daddy? But they hear my what? voice the voice of God is a another token another symbol another expression of what his presence hallelujah Genesis 3 verse 8 please write down these scriptures I'm building this case so that you know we truly come to an understanding of what the presence of God is Let's read together. I want to go. And they heard what? The voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees. They heard his voice and then they hid from his presence. You see that? You see the voice being a sign, a symbol of his presence. Hallelujah. Now, but we also know because when you say voice, some people will be looking out for audible voice. Psalm 29 verse 3, Psalm 29 verse 3 says that the voice of the Lord is upon what? Many waters. Many waters. And when you, you talk about waters in scripture, you are speaking about the word of God. You know, you've heard about the scripture, the washing of the water of the word. Ephesians 5.26 the washing of the water of the word. Amen. So, one of the ways that the Lord manifests his presence is by his word. Say by his word. Say by his word. Okay, so I've told you about the voice and I've shared with you that the voice of God is in, in his word. is upon many waters. So, you want to encounter his presence, you encounter his word. The Bible says that I am, I mean, in, in, in John 1, in the beginning what was, was what? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So God and His Word are one. So an encounter with the Word is an encounter with His presence. An encounter with the Word is an encounter with His presence. In fact, if you read verse 14, verse 14, it says, And the word was made, what? Flesh. 
and he did what? Dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. As the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Are we learning? Another way we encounter God's presence, you know, and as seen in scripture, is by his name. Say his names. Say his names. Okay. The, the God's, God's attributes, God's nature and character are hidden and embedded in his name. So every now and then, he will manifest, reveal his name to you or to people. We've seen that a couple of times in our church. We get into a season and a name of God comes. And that aspect of God becomes revealed to us. Amen. Matthew 18, 20. Are we learning? Matthew. For where two or three are gathered together where? In my name. There am I in the midst of them. Very shortly we will learn the activation part. You know, the, the name of a person represents the person. That's why if you go to a big man's office and he wants to refer you to another big man, he doesn't need to come physically, right? He gives you what? A complimentary card that has his name and signs it. And when you take it somewhere, they respond to you as though the man were with you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let them that are called by the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Say, I'm called by the name of the Lord. Oh, once you are born again, his name is upon you. See, I carry his presence. See, I carry his presence. See, may the Holy Spirit help us to, to express this word and your life will never remain the same again. Now, let's, let's look briefly at the blessings of the presence of God. We're going somewhere. The blessings of the presence of God. Some of the, you know, goodies, blessings. The presence of God protects. You know, there's protection and preservation in the presence of God. There's protection and preservation. So write those down. And this is just preamble. We're going to hit on the, the main revelation now. By the grace of God. Psalm 27 verse 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. Lots of scriptures. 4 and 5. Let's read together. I want to go. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house or presence of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will do what? He will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Say protection. Protects. There is protection in God's presence. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, I tell you there's protection in the presence. See, there's protection. May I say it again? I've said it before. The safest place in the world right now is the presence of God. It is the presence of of God. It's the present. Haven't you heard about school shooting in, in America, mall shooting in America, terrorist attacks, kidnapping, and all of that? Nowhere is safe but the presence of the Lord. There's protection and preservation. Zechariah 2 verse 5. Zechariah 2 verse 5 says, for I the Lord shall be what? A wall of fire round about and will be the glory in her midst. There's protection. There is. There is. There, I've, I've seen it time and time again. That you can be in a place and God's glory, God's presence is upon you and things happen. And there are casualties everywhere. But by reason of his manifest presence, you are delivered. 
Say, I'm delivered by the presence of God. Say, I'm safe in the presence of God. Jeremiah 1, 18. If you are sleeping now, too bad. I'm not going to hoop to make you wake up. Want to go? For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. Why? Continue, continue verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail. For why? I am with thee. There's the presence of God. Say the presence of God. Ensures protection and preservation. Next, his presence guides. There's guidance in the presence of God. When, when, when we live and practice and host the presence of God, we experience divine guidance. Remember when in the old covenant, it was what? A cloud by day to the children of Israel. And by night it was what? A pillar of fire. You know, and wherever it went, the people went. So it, it was a, a, a shield from the sun and from the cold, but it was also what? Divine guidance. When we, we live in the presence of God, when we, we know how to host the presence of God, we enjoy divine guidance. Nothing just happens in your life. Your life is not chaotic. There is direction. Let me show you a scripture. Genesis 4.16. The converse of that. Want to go. And Cain did what? Went out from the presence of God and dwell in the land of Nod on the east. That word Nod means to wander. What not? If you check your concordance, it means to wander. So when you leave God's presence, you wander in life. You make wrong choices. You go to wrong places. You partner with wrong people. You get wrong results. May the Lord help us. Let's go to Genesis 39, verse 23. The next thing, there is blessing and favor in the presence. Say blessing and favor. The presence of God gives blessings, blessings and favor. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it what? To prosper. This is Joseph. Let's go to verse 5. Just fe verse 5. I'm, I'm selling the presence of God to you. The benefits first. Want to go. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him what? overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed, you see, blessings the Egyptian's house for what? and the blessing of the Lord was what? upon all that he had in the house you can be a staff in a company and because of the presence of God on you and with you and in you, the company is blessed because of you 
No, it's not a prayer. Someone can walk out of an organization and it affects the life of that organization because the one who was the carrier of the blessing has just left. There are people like that. See, when an organization finds them, they do everything to keep them. Oh yes, there are people like that. In government, there are people like that in banks. Carriers of God's... And it's, yes, they add value in terms of, you know, what they bring, you know, skill and expertise. But after a while, there are, there are certain things they can't explain about them. And that's the, the, the presence of God. May you manifest the presence of God. You see, when people hear, oh, they are trying to sack me, and then they want to sack you, and they don't care if you are sacked. No, 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 no. You are not manifesting the presence. There are people they don't sack like that. It's true. There are people they don't sack. So be it unto you in Jesus' name. The mere thought of them losing you makes them, call, they, they will call an emergency meeting. He said, is there anything we've done wrong? Can we, you know, is there, and then they think, okay, let's increase your pecs and, you know, remuneration. A believer is, is meant to be that way. Hallelujah. Psalm 16 verse 11, I will show you a path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures. The, the thing you are looking for in life, the satisfaction is in the presence of God. What people call enjoyment in the world is not enjoyment. They have it and then the more they have the world's enjoyment, the more empty they become. The more void they, f they feel. That's the, that's the frustration behind the billionaires of this world. The people you hear who have billions of naira of um, dollars and still commit suicide. Because somewhere in their minds they thought if I could just own this group of companies, if I could have this influence, if my bank balance sheet is this much, then, but they don't know that he's put in eternity in our hearts. That there is a void that only his presence can fill. There are pleasures, satisfaction in his presence. There is also rest and refreshing. Rest and refreshing. Life can be overwhelming. How many of you go through life sometimes and you're like, is it worth it? Okay. I, I don't pastor liars, but I, I thought, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Sometimes you're like, I mean, is, is, what, what is life? And it's just overwhelming. Work is overwhelming. Marriage is overwhelming. Health is overwhelming. How many of you have been there before? It's not, it's not a crime to be there. Sometimes you are there. It's not a crime. But there is a place that I go to rest. It's the presence. We have a place. There's a place you can enter into. There's a place you can get into. And then you just spend some time with your father and you come out feeling like you can take on the world. You come out feeling like, where is that devil? You come out with your shoulders high, your head, you know, straight and you're walking, not in pride because you've encountered your father. Exodus 33 verse 14. It's real. The reason why people give up in marriage is because they don't know that place. On their job, they don't know that place. They give up on life. They want to end it. It's because they feel that I, mean, I, can't, I can't continue this way. But there's a mechanism. There's, there's strategy. And the strategy is the presence of God. You go to the office and your boss is, is running wild and your targets and you feel like you are losing 
you're, you're losing your mind, you can't cope anymore, I have good news for you. There is a place. And he said, my presence shall do what? Go with you and I will give the rest. I mean, if you do the things that some of us do, the attacks, hallelujah challenge, do you know the demons we come up against? Do you know the attacks? Do you know how many people call, send me messages every time from Instagram? Pastor Nard, I had a vision that you died. I, for years, I'm telling you, sometimes big pastors, oh, you have to pray. I saw obituary. I did, so, I did this. I, I'm telling you. They still send last week because I'm used to it. But I know what to do. I tell them, when they tell me, Pastor Nard, I just woke up. The dream was too real. Uh, they are carrying against you. I said, the Bible said they shall surely gather. It's not, it's not breaking news. It shall surely gather. You just happen to see this one. But not by me. And then I get into the presence of my father. I get there. I just bask in his presence. And as I bask in his presence, I worship him. I get a counter word. I get an assurance. With long life will I satisfy you. And show you my salvation. And when I'm done, and they and then they call me again. I said, Pastor Nat, did you? Read? I said, I don't need to read this. It's sorted. No problem. Just calm down. Be calming down. I said, We're still here. Amen. Amen. You have to know that place. Acts three verse nineteen. Can, can I prophesy any negative dream that was had against you dying? I stand in my office. I stand in my position. I stand in the knowledge of who I am in Christ Jesus. I declare it cancelled. Yeah. That verdict of death is cancelled. Please be sensitive. Be sensitive. We prayed into this service 12 hours. I didn't sleep all night. My wife is here. I didn't sleep. Waking up, praying in tongues. Praying, say, Lord, 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 visit us. Amen. Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when what the times of refreshing come where from where the presence of the Lord there's a refreshing have you have you been beaten by Lagos son before been smitten by Lagos son before in traffic maybe in a bus they didn't have AC well buses don't have ACs in Lagos and you were there three hours beaten testy and then you go home and into a shower. And then... <laughs> how refreshing is that? That's what happens when you come to church sometimes. Heavy. And then sounds of many waters begin to worship. And sing. Sounds of many waters. As they are singing. All of a sudden. The person who came here dry. And just, you know, beating and spitting. Begin to feel a refreshing, hopeful, feeling light, feeling like you just had a bath. Say the presence of God. That's what happened a few minutes ago when we were worshiping. And sometimes you're not even the person who cries. I know some people cry. Sometimes it's not, it's not all the cry and worship that is present. So sometimes, ah, Biola, ah, ah, Tayo, ah. You do this one, Tayo. You do this one, no. Even, even at that, the presence is still healing. Amen. But sometimes you're not a cry baby. You don't even cry. You can't explain why you are crying. That's a token of the presence. That's a sign. That he's, he's, he's wrapping you in his arms. He's wrapping you in his arms. He's wrapping you in his arms. Darkness hides. Next point. And demons tremble at his presence. There is a way you can carry the presence of God. And there will be a reaction. Oh yes. Some of the people who just hate you and they just can't stand you. It's not because you did anything wrong. There is a presence that is, that is, that is affecting them. It's true. Mark 5, 1 to 8. Long read, won't read. There was a, a, a demoniac with legions. When Jesus was coming, go to verse 8. They cried out. They said, what do we have to do with you? 
Go from verse 7. Let me see. And cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Jesus did not even speak. He didn't bind. He just showed up. God is calling us to that place where sometimes you are not praying because of presence consciousness because of knowing what you carry and hosting and practicing it because we are getting to the good part now I'm just selling the, the presence so, 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 so that you desire it there is a place where they just they know you they say Paul we know Jesus we know who are you they were casting out a, 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 a devil at the office right at, at the office you know someone came here just a pretty young lady and then just asked for prayer and then he went for about two three hours right was it two three hours around just and the demon was crying out like if you see this sister a child of God but I don't know how demons were tormented and then at some point, they, 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 they mentioned Pastor Deboe. What did they, oh, what did she say? He said, that's God's general. Please don't call him. That's God's general. Please, please. Then they told her, sit on Pastor's seat. He said, no, I can't sit on his seat. I can't sit on his seat. Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Hope they know you. And I'm not joking. I hope they know you. Hope you are known. Pastor Iren was telling me, I think I've shared it before. The last boot camp they had in Ikeja. I went, I was running late, you know, and I, and I, I didn't even know about this. I didn't even know about this. So it was the last time I met him, he shared. He said they were casting out the devil from someone, you know, in the green room. And that the, the pastors were there. He said that as soon as I drove into the, the, the compound, the devil told him, them, Pastor Nat just arrived now. He said, how did you know? He said, Pastor Nat just arrived. He's been tormenting us with his songs. Truly, they send people to come and check. I just arrived. Do they know you in heaven? Do they know you in hell? Now, I'm going to show you what they see when they see you. There's something they see. Maybe put it this way, there's someone they see. I don't want to rush. So, darkness and demons tremble. Then I like this one. There's transformation in the presence of God. Transformation. As much as I love the power of God, there's no transformation through the power. It's the presence. No flesh glories. In his presence, there's transformation. You know, as we behold, we are, we are what? Transformed. Put that scripture for me. Second Corinthians 3 17. Second Corinthians 3 17. Let's read it. There's transformation in the presence of God. There's transformation. Remember. His presence is his face. And his light. In his light we do what? We see light. As we behold him. As we behold his presence. His face. We are transformed to the same image. But we all with open face. Beholding us in the, the glass. The glory or the presence of the Lord. Are changed into the same image. From glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. There's something that happens as you soak in God's presence. As you spend time in the word. It's, you, are, you, are, you are beholding something. You are transformed to the very thing you are beholding. That's how it works. That's the technology of the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me run. Now, let me tell you something about the manifest presence. Say the manifest presence. There is the omnipresence of God which is available to all men, saved or unsaved. The omnipresence of God is available to all men. That's, 
That was what David meant in Psalm 139 verse 8. Let's go there, Psalm 139 verse 8. He says, where, where, where shall I hide from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, go from verse 7, go from verse 7. Go from verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. The omnipresence is available to everybody. Saved or unsaved. He makes the rain to fall on the just and the just. But there is the exclusive preserve of the believer. And that's the manifest. Say the manifest. The manifest presence of God. Say the manifest presence of God. That's what we feel when we come together. Or sense is a better word. When you are worshipping. And you can't explain it, but there's a tangibility in the atmosphere. There's like a weight of glory. There's like an awe. There's a, there's a holy awe you are feeling. There's this, this holiness you are feeling. You know, have you noticed that sometimes when you leave church and go, you know, to everyday life, some, some thoughts you were battling with outside, sometimes you don't battle with them in church. Some things that were disturbing you here. You know, there's a way you, you, you saw life that was different. But do you know, the reason for this sermon is because you can host that presence everywhere. You don't have to wait till you come to church. The plan of God that is, is, is that you carry it everywhere. That we are carriers and practitioners, say practitioners, of the manifest presence of God. Life is too hard. It's too, it's, too, it's too risky to wait for Pastor Nat to come and raise that atmosphere for you on Sunday. You can have it in your car. You can have it in your home. Are we being blessed? What's the manifest presence of God? Write this down. It's when the nature, the character, and attributes of God is revealed to a person, a people, or a place such that they are also aware of it. It's an awareness of the attributes, nature, power, glory. You see, the glory of God is the, is the, is the worth of God. It's, it's how much he's worth. It's when God decides to manifest that. Remember, Moses said, show me your glory. God, God says, you know, no, nobody sees my what face and leaves, but I'll make what my, my, I'll show you my back and when he showed him his back there are a couple of things that were revealed his goodness, his truth, his favor his mercy yeah. hallelujah an example of that was what is, is what they call the Shekinah glory, there's no word Shekinah literally but the idea of it in scripture is, 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 is there it's a visible and tangible manifestation of the presence of God. Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14, you can read at home. When, you know, um, Solomon was um, dedicating the temple and then he had 120, you know, trumpeters coming and the Bible says as they made one sound to be heard as they worshipped, then the house was filled with the cloud. Even the glory, the Shekinah, it is the, it is, is God revealing his essence in a place. Hallelujah. What is it about this presence that people desired it? Let's look at Moses quickly, 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 quickly. So it's a, it's a teaching, but it's also an impartation. Moses and the presence. Exodus 33, 14, we look at some scriptures. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Now, if you read the context from 33, you realize that God was upset with these people because he, he called them what a stiff-necked people. They were stiff-necked. God says, if I follow you on this trip, I will kill you people. True. I will, I will just kill you. He said, okay, so I don't want to kill you. I'll send my angel to go with you. Now, if, if I was there, I probably would have taken that choice because there's, 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 there's an occasion in scripture where one angel killed 185,000 people. So it's not bad 
going with an angel. Or some of them. And it's about to come Sing it now. Why? I get back in. It's true. I know the Lord. I walk, Father. I walk with God the Father. I walk with the host of. As powerful as angels are, Moses said, mm -mm -mm -mm, We don't want angels. I appreciate. Thank you, sir. Verse 14. If your presence does not go with me, don't send me. How many of us go through life? We go to places and we are not sure God is with us, and God didn't send us. We embark on a trip. Remember I said that the word of God is a token of his presence. So when God says go on that trip, it means his presence is with you. How many of you travel, go to places, travel to parties, and the word of God is not with you? Somebody say, wow. I heard somebody saying, wow. He says, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us hither. These are men who knew the secret of success. How about David? David and the presence. Take not you. Cast me not away from your presence. That was the secret. He knew. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I will dwell. These are men who knew the value of the presence of God. The value of the presence of God. Do you know the value of the presence of God? Ask somebody, do you know the value of the presence of God? It's too risky. That's why we pray before we go. That's why we, 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 we send a, a prophetic word ahead of you. Because we're sending, you know, an accompaniment of his presence. Now, how about Jesus? This is where we are going. This is where, this is where the feast is. Go to Jesus. Hebrews 5, 7. Go to the Amplified Version. Playing in the presence of Jehovah. And come up for me. Now, can you give me the classic? Let's read this very slowly together. Want to go? In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up definite special petitions. For that which he not only wanted but needed. And supplications with strong crying and tears. Say strong crying. And tears. To him who was always able to save him out from death. And he was heard. Because his reverence to God. Of his reverence to God. His godly fear. His piety. In that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. The reason why Jesus cried and cried blood was not because of the nails. It was not because of the distastefulness of even the sin. He cried because at that moment when they placed upon him your sins and my sins, he will be detached from his father's presence. Say, ah! There's no reason to live again. He shrank. Put that scripture there. Put the scripture there, guys. The horrors of separation. He said, what? This presence, this togetherness, this fellowship, we were together when you said, let us make man in our image. And for, for a moment, that's why he cried out. 
Why has thou what? Jesus valued the presence of God. What do you and I value? He shrunk. See, if you know the value of the presence of God, you will run away from anything that will tamper with that presence. The reason why we misbehave, the reason why we are still dropping the ball, still indulging in intentional sin, is because we don't value the presence. He shrank from the horrors. He couldn't, he couldn't think about it. That's why he, 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 cry, he cried blood because he was going to be detached from the presence. He shrank. The Bible says in Matthew 26, I think 34, he was exceedingly sorrowful because at that moment, you know why? Because God is of purer eyes than to behold world. Why? Because when he sees Jesus, he will take his face off him. Remember the face is a sign of the presence. So Jesus thought for one moment, he, the father would take his face off me. What, 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 I mean, I mean, how can I handle that? Somebody say the presence of God. Is God speaking to us? Now, how does that apply to us? Let's come back home. Please understand that a major feature of the New Testament is God's presence being in and with us. Say a major feature of the New Testament life is that God is in us and with us. In the Old Covenant, the Holy Spirit never was resident in a person. It's a New Testament concept. Or remember when the prophet Ezekiel says a time will come where he will put what? His spirit in us. Ezekiel 37. He will put his spirit in us. Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says what? Know ye not that your body is what? Is the temple. Not only do we enjoy his presence with us, but his presence is in us. Saying in us. Colossians 1.21 says, Christ in you, what? The hope of glory. Brethren, the indwelling is one of the hallmarks of the New Testament life. The fact that God tabernacles in man. Let's move on. So what really is the presence of God? What really is this thing? Or let me say, who is the presence of God? Who is the presence of God? If you read Numbers 23, when you go home, remember the story of Balak and Balaam. Balak called what? The, the prophet to curse what? The children of Israel. And, you know, for, for financial reward, he came and he could not curse them. He said, you can't curse these ones. He said, you can't curse them. These ones are blessed. There was the reason why he couldn't curse them. Go to Numbers 24, 17 to 18, amplified. Go to Numbers 24. Is somebody writing? Is somebody learning? Let me show you. Let's read. One to go. I see him, but not now. <laughs> I behold him, but he is not near. A star shall come forth out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel and shall cross all the corners of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth, Moab's sons of tumult and Edom shall be taken as possession. Seir also shall be dispossessed who were Israel's enemies while Israel does. Who is the one who is supposed to crush the head of the serpent? He saw someone. He saw a star. He saw one. He, he, didn't, he, he could not really define him. But he said, not now. That one was going to rise. That one was going to rise. That one was going to rise. Go to Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3. Who? Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1.3. We're closing. Hebrews 1.3. Are you about to pray now? Are you ready? Are you ready? This place is about to erupt. Oh, lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus.
let's read one to go who being what the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right who is this presence of God Colossians 2 verse 9 quickly Colossians 2 verse 9 Colossians 2 verse 9 Colossians 2 verse 9 give me the amplified oh somebody pray in the spirit Colossians 2 verse 9 for what in him the whole fullness of deity the Godhead continues to dwell in bodily form giving complete expression of the divine nature God put everything that makes him God into Jesus Jesus is the presence of God Jesus is the glory of God Jesus is the glory of God Jesus is the glory of God and do you know the good news the Bible says Christ in you the fullness of God dwelling bodily dwells in you may the Holy Spirit help you to understand that when you got born again Christ came into your heart the fullness of God dwells in you John 14 verse 9 this is what made me pray out in my house pacing up and down so Jesus said to Philip when they said show me the father what did he say Jesus said unto them have I been so long time with you and yet has thou not known me Philip he that has seen me has seen the father and how seest thou then show us the father like Jesus let me ask you as his presence been in you all these years and you are still saying where is the presence of God have you been born again all these years and you are still saying where is the presence of God how can you be carrying the very presence of God how can you be the host of the presence of God what know ye not that your body is the temple the God of the universe dwells in you write this down Christ is the visible manifestation of God while the Holy Spirit in us is the visible manifestation of Christ that's so good I think that's I think that's really good Christ is the visible manifestation of God while the Holy Spirit in us is the visible manifestation of Christ just as in the old covenant the presence of God was in a tent which was called a tabernacle today God's fullness dwells in your tents your temple by the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit now why do we have this enormous unlimited host in us but we look still powerful and helpless let me show you the secrets John 14 verse 20 John 14 verse 20 let's read together one to go and that day ye shall know stop stop say that day has come as with every truth in scripture it is activated with knowing you can have all the power in the world until you have a knowing until you have a revelation that I had a few days ago. Like, what? What? He lives in me. He lives in me. That day you shall know that what? I am in my father. And that what? Ye are in me. And I in you. Una no know what you una carry. Somebody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. The work of salvation is a work of reconciliation. What was it reconciling? He came to reconcile us back to.
to God's presence. Say the work of reconciliation came to reconcile us to God's presence. It was a work of restoration to God's presence. Hebrews 10 20. Hebrews 10 20. Hebrews 10 20. Hebrews 10 20. Oh, we will worship for a few minutes and then activations will happen. Activations will happen. Activations will happen. By a new and living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. He made a way for us to enter into God's presence and for him to dwell in us. And for him to dwell in us. Hebrews 9.24 Hebrews 9.24 Hebrews 9.24 Media help me. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear what? In the presence of God for who? Do you know you have access to the presence of God? See I have access to the very presence of God. Now, 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 listen, everybody listen. Remember I said that knowing, the knowing is the activation. The key to enjoying the presence of God is a concept, it's a biblical concept, but somebody wrote a book, a, a, a man called Brother Lawrence, he introduced us to a concept called practicing the presence of God. Say practicing the presence of God. Or hosting the presence of God. Take your notes and write quickly. While you are standing, while you are standing. Practicing the presence of God is living in the revelation, consciousness, awareness of the presence it is carrying yourself in a way and manner as though God is in you, with you, and for you. And God is really in you. It's, it's, it's living in a way. It's a lifestyle. It's living in that revelation, that consciousness and awareness that God lives in you. Say, practicing the presence of God. It is speaking from that place of consciousness. It is reacting to life's challenges and storms from that place. When Jesus was in a storm, the one who was the carrier of God, what did he do? You see, his reaction was different from those who did not know. So number one, as you begin to experience the benefits of the presence of God, it begins with an awareness and consciousness. Say awareness and consciousness. Genesis 28, quickly. Genesis 28, 16 and 17. You are feeding right this morning, Oasis. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And what? The presence you don't know about will benefit you. Because you will react to life like a normal person. The Bible says, man that is in honor and knoweth not is like a beast that perisheth. In other words, you have God. You have access. But life is beating on you hard. It starts with acknowledging honoring, sorry, that, that's the second point. Second Kings 6.17, 2 Kings 6.17, this is, this is, this is so good, I have to just give you these points. Second Kings 6.17, remember Elisha? Eh? And his servants, they were surrounded. They, we are surrounded! Give us a context. See, when you don't know In detail the presence of God at work in your life you will react like a mere mortal you will react in ignorance 
you respond like an unbeliever. And when the servant of the man of God was risen and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas! In other words, Mogbeo, my master, how shall we do? What thing we go do? And he answered, Fear not! For they, he said, Fear not! We get back, you know. He said, fear not, we get back in you know. oh. We know the walk Those people ganging up against you in the office. Eh? You are the one. Align them, do that. You've not learned how to practice God's presence. You don't know what you have. You think there are more. You think there are more. You think there are more. Shh, listen to me. I'm not telling you practical some of you were here when you know you know the things we go through on social media and attacks and i don't even give spiritual attacks if i had no revelation of who i am and the pres the presence i carry and those with me pastor nat will be here the things i've gone through the attacks the dragging every now and then when i when the when the the enemy comes like a flood. I just retract to my place. I spend time with the Lord. I open the Bible. I spend time in worship. All of a sudden, I get this awareness that they that are with me are more than. And then I'm like, you better don't look for my trouble. See, people have died on our case. There are some testimonies we don't share. I beg people not to look for my trouble. I beg people. I beg people. Don't try it. The prophet said in verse 17. Go to verse 17. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Clap your hands, stamp your feet, say, Lord, open my eyes to the reality of your presence. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to the reality of your presence. Open my eyes. By the speed of wisdom and revelation. Hey! I get back, you know. I know they walk alone. I know they walk alone. Number two, apart from awareness, is acknowledging and honoring that presence. That's how you practice the presence. Acknowledging and honoring that presence. And what's the way we do that? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. This is not about, I know how to sing or not. You have to be a praiser and a worshiper. Psalm 95 verse 1. Psalm 95 verse 1. Worship through music is a secret to practicing his presence. So when the choir is singing, we are not just wasting time. It's a protocol. Come, let us do what? Sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of his salvation. Let us do what? Come. Into what? With what? With what? And make what? Open your mouth and begin to sing in the spirit. Begin to practice that presence. Open your mouth. Every time you do this. You begin to tear up a manifestation. Lift your hands and do that. Hey, Yado, Basana, Baratame, Kuriana, Matena, Yado, Basana, Baratame, Yana, Matua, Lift your hands. 
this is not just my ministry this is my job I, I know this this is one thing I know some things you know in small measures but I know this well I know that if you if you if you if you fix your heart right you lift your hands and open your mouth and bring the right tools the right cows and bless him and thank him and praise him and worship the beauty of holiness all of a sudden you activate his manifest presence you begin to sense that there are a host that there is a God that the Lord of hosts Shabbat the Lord of hosts the King of glory Ayobo Shada when you sing it with an understanding hey, see when he gives you this revelation and you utter it by the spirit you activate the dimension of God in this area so he manifests like a warrior like a God the Lord of hosts with angels with mighty warring angels when you do it from your spirit with a conviction Ayaba, say, don't wait for me, begin to do that. Place your attention on him. Why do you waste your time in traffic when you can experience him? Why do you waste time when you can plug your earphones and enter into the secret place and activate the host of heaven? Another way you activate it is through his name. It's through his name. Do you know that every time you say in the name of Jesus that you are invoking his presence? When you say, in my name, they shall cast out devils. It's as though Jesus is the one casting it out. For where two or three are gathered, in my name, there I am in their presence. From today, don't, don't, don't joke with the name of Jesus. Don't listen to those kids that joke with the name of Jesus. Don't use the name of Jesus in vain. Listen. When I am on Instagram and, and I hear people cry, Jesus, I just scroll away. Because that is his presence. Don't joke, don't use his name in vain. Every time you say in the name of Jesus, it's as though Jesus is translocated to where you are. When you cast out the devil in the name of Jesus, it's as though Jesus is the one doing it. Permit me to use this word. We invoke his presence by his name. His name. His name. His name. His name. Can you combine the three points I've given you? An awareness of his presence. Like you know by the spirit. Worship him. And begin to call his name. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every name. When you do that. He shows up. The word of God. The agency of the word of God. The next point. John 1, 4. I've mentioned this. When you release the rhema word. 
you release and activate the manifest presence of God. We bring to bear the manifest presence of God. When you unleash the rhema word, the next point is obedience. Obedience. John 14, 21. When you obey God, you manifest his presence. John 14, 21. And he that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loved me. And he that loved me and shall love shall be love of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself every time you obey God and love him you experience his manifest presence the last point is faith you have to believe all of these things you have to believe that God is with you say God is with me say God is in me do people who carry God die, die like chickens do things happen to them by chance? Open your mouth and lift your hands and begin to bless him now. The word of God has come to us. Lord of hosts, the King of love, Yahweh. On the basis of the revelation you have, begin to confront everything that is confronting you. Confront every mountain confronting you. Now that you know that you are not alone. Now that you know. Yes, yes, it's already. There's somebody with a condition with your pancreas. Pancreas, run out right now. I just heard it now. When the presence is available, the gifts of the spirit begin to work. I had pancreas. A situation with your pancreas. The Lord is healing you now. Come, 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 come. In the name of the risen Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. We speak healing, wholeness on the pancreas. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Healing for your pancreas. It is done. In the presence of God, I speak healing over your pancreas. Now be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. No more. Be healed. Be healed. I speak to your pancreas. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of the one who called me, Reveal in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, live her, live her. The same, live her, live her. His name, be healed. Prosper, no one. Be healed. Healing for your pancreas. Be healed. Reveal. Be healed right now. In the name of the Lord Yeshua Hamashiach, be healed. In Jesus, lift your hands. He's here. Lift your hands. Everybody standing. Standing. Now, place your hand on your head. Everybody. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and my Father, I've shared your word. Visit your people now. Unveil your presence. Your manifest presence. Your Shekinah glory. Let the weight of your glory rest on that lady now. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's it on my left. On my left side is coming powerfully. Powerfully. Aha. Uh -huh. It's a mighty presence. 
an awareness. Somebody's eyes, spiritual senses are heightened, are open. Yes. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. It's coming to the choir right now. Let the hand of the Lord rest on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I come against every oppression of the devil. You witch. You wizard. You devil. I come against you in the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. Your oppression in that life comes to an end. Now! Now, every infirmity, every sickness in your body, I declare it, every irreversible condition, every terminal disease is healed in the presence of God right now. Yes, that growth disappears. You lump in the breast, on the left side of the breast. Go! Now, in the name of Jesus. That pain on your leg. Yeah, there's somebody with a severe back ache. The hand of the Lord is upon you right now. You are healed right now. Let that ears be open. Let that ear pop open. Let that ear pop open. In the name of Jesus. Remember, it's a special service, so it's dragging a bit. That which my heavenly father has not planted in your spirit, soul, and body, I command it rooted out now. I declare healing for that emotional damage. Somebody suffered an emotional damage. Your soul was really affected. I speak a refreshing now. Yes, that's the person. That's the person. Yeah, refreshing. He restores your soul. He restored your soul. He restores your soul. He restores your soul. He restores your soul. I release miracles, signs, and wonders right now. Right now. Right now. Yes, right now. Right now. Yeah, hey, I, I'm, I'm hearing that chains are being broken. I heard that now. Chains are broken. You are here, you are feeling chains are, are breaking. Oh, yes. Let me address. There's somebody here. You, you, you have a demonic presence consciousness. You feel like a demonic being. But right now, it's exchanged by divine presence consciousness. That strange being following you is judged now. In the name of Jesus. He's judged by fire. Yeah, yes. You see somebody following you. You see, so uh, hey, I address that demon spirit, that foul spirit, in the name of the Lord of hosts, Yeshua Hamashiach. Your your term has come to an end. Somebody is going for a visa interview. The presence of God is going with you. Now, as we close, you are here, you are not born again. You are not born again. It means that, no, 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 don't, don't, don't sit down, don't, 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 just keep the attitude. You are not born again. It means that you don't have God living inside of you. That's what it means. So you are not a part of this thing we are seeing, you don't understand. The born again experience is about God coming to live inside of you. The indwelling. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the risen Christ in us. Let me say it again. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the risen Christ in us. If you are not born again, every eye closed, head bowed. I want you to run. I'm not going to beg you. Today, God is here. At the count of five, I want you to run out. Take your Bibles and everything. God is calling you. One, two, three, four, five. Come, 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 Pastor Nathaniel. I'm a sinner. I'm tired of playing games. I want to surrender my life. There are ladies here who need to come out here now. Come, come, come to Jesus. 
That's right. Come, come. Quickly, run. I, I said run. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Quickly, quickly. When you come. Yes, that's right. He sees those tears. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come. Come. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of playing church. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Oh, Pastor Nathaniel, I'm ashamed. Come to Jesus. The born again experience is about God living inside of you. His presence is here. His presence is here. Now, even after we close, I tell the choir to stay back and worship God. Some of you may need to soak here another 10, 15, 20 minutes. Soak in His presence until something happens to your heart. Please lead them, lead them. The presence of God is here. I declare that you are preserved by that presence. Please place your right hand on your head as, as I close. Let me put that blessing on you. Number 626. You hear this with a, with a new understanding. Father, I place your name, a mark of your presence, on everyone in the oasis. That we have become a people of the presence. From verse 24. The Lord bless. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face, his presence to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you his shalom. From today, the presence of God becomes so obvious on your life. Demons will see you and cry out because you are a people of his presence.